I did a little survey. I asked people, what's it like for them being single and what are they up against, basically? And you know, what I got was pretty interesting. They fell into three basic categories. So what I heard was fear of rejection, fear of hurting somebody's feelings, and fear of having to give up a lifestyle that you've created that you really enjoy. You know, most people are going to hear the word fear. Well, that's repeated, you know, all of those possibilities. But really, the operative word that, <clears throat> that I'm thinking is thought, because fear is nothing more than thought. And there's this acronym you've probably heard before that fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. I love that because it's so true. You know, we just get so caught up in what appears to be a reality that we are creating ourselves. And the great thing is that it's all connected to a feeling because we feel what we think. So <clears throat> what a fail-safe way to know when our thinking is off course, to know that when you feel bad, that's an indication that your thinking is probably somewhere in the tanker and not something to take seriously. Give yourself a mental break and then come back to whatever it is and you'll have a fresh perspective about that. I was engaged once and lovely man, but just the thoughts of going through the process, I, I couldn't get ahead with it. So yeah. So I, I pulled the plug on it. But and uh, not but and that was let me see. Let me just yeah, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> mm. So sometimes I find myself wondering if I've made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. We are still good friends. In the meantime, he moved on with his life, got married, and they are expecting their first baby for May. And we still talk on the phone. We're really good friends. We haven't seen each other for a long time, person to person, but we talk over the phone. But is that all that thinking about marriage? What does it mean? Uh, in terms of roles, really, I do love my independence, so I don't know if I'm ready to let it go yet. <laughs> Could you please talk about that? Thank you. Sure. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, I know people in my life as well who have, they call it the M word, as though it's something terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's great to recognize that it's your negative thinking that's getting in the way for you. You know, that's all it is. Because underneath it, what you're looking for is a feeling of connection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the form that it takes. Mm -hmm. What does that matter? Uh, you know, so if your partner really wants to be married, just find out, ask, you know, why is that so important to you? What does that mean to you? And really listen to what, is going on for that the other person and you know see what comes see what comes it, the form is not the thing the feeling is the thing that's what you're looking for is is a really beautiful connection and I know people who have that, who have always, they've been in, in a long-term marriage and they've always lived on opposite coasts. Isn't that interesting? One was a professor. Another one was, um, had something to do with, um, not the NEA, but, you know, the big arts uh, governmental position in that state. So neither of them could leave their states. And they had a beautiful relationship. They'd get together in the middle on weekends and rehab a condo in Chicago. And I think they have a place in Greece. You know, so who, what does it matter? How it, it you know, the little, we, we get so caught up in what society says or our past experiences. You know, you had a bad experience in being in a marriage. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the case uh, the next time around. Well, I think those are great points. I think that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about something really in terms of 
uh, of it being formless. Love, true love, it, it really has no form to it. Um, but then it looks like, uh, you know, there's some form we need to take, like marriage. Marriage is just an idea. It's just a form. And so we start to get thinking about that. Uh, and, and then that thinking may, may take us away from the, the, the loving feelings we were living in. And, you know, you live in a, a loving feeling with another person or just in life or with yourself. Um, and you've got the freedom to choose any form you wanted to take. But you have to, what happens for people is they start thinking about the form, a particular form their love is going to take. And so then that form becomes something that uh, they get thinking about. And, and then we get the whole range of thinking, insecure thinking. Sometimes we can get, you know, uh, positive thinking about it sometimes. But I think what's helpful is just to see that, that that's just a form uh, two people's connections might take. Uh, you don't want to think about the form. You want to keep reminding yourself of the feeling in you that got, got awakened uh, as you met this person. And uh, that, that'll take care of you. And to help yourself recognize um, when you get into thinking about a particular form it has to take. There's, you know, once you get into um, the physical world, there are the traditions and expectations that people have made up. Um, and you, that's where the thinking comes in that might get people fearful about a certain form their relationship might take. But always coming back to the love and understanding that's underneath that, that helps. I mean, I, every couple I've seen are convinced that the love is gone. They've got to move on to um, another relationship. but like Laurie mentioned, what they're suffering from is that they've just got into these habits of thinking about one another in ways that make them feel bad. They start to find faults. They start to get negative opinions. They start to be judgmental. And that takes people away from the love and understanding they started with. So if you find yourself getting out there in some insecure thought about where to go in a relationship, just come back to the deeper feeling in you and stay reflective with that feeling that'll guide you. Yeah. Well said, Mark. That's great. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Laurie. <laughs> I meant, I really did want to be well said, you know, I was, I was hoping it was well said. <laughs> no, thank you, Laurie. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Laura, you want to check with in, with anybody else? Yeah, I love having interactive webinars, you know, so it's great. Christian. Yeah, I'll ask a question. What do you think of, you know, I've heard George Pransky say that the right mindset, you could you know, be happily married to anyone. And I kind of get what he's saying because obviously yeah. all thought, all feelings are coming from thought. And having said that, um, what do you make of the situation where you can really enjoy being with someone um, but not have that spark? <laughs> you know, no desire to, to, for it to turn into something sexual. So I'm not sure if your question, Christian, you mean what do, what do we think about... Yeah, I just wonder... Yeah, you you know that. Um, it, yeah, have you've got any observations about that? You know, if that if that is that that need for a spark, a kind of out outside in irrelevance, because <laughs> it's it doesn't feel like it's it doesn't feel like that. Or what do you do about it if there's no spark? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I think what well, the grain of truth is that. Um, if you find someone if you, and then that feels right to you and you have a deep feeling of love and connection and understanding, uh, you could be happily married the rest of your life if married is the form you want to take with that person. And the truth of that is because 
the only thing that get in the way of you uh, being happily in that relationship is your own thinking about the person. And really, here's the, here's the other part to that. When you first start out with someone, you really, really don't know the humanness of them. You really don't. And that relationship can continue to evolve with you seeing more and more of their humanness because both of you start to get your own personal thinking out of the way of that relationship. And as you do, it grows deeper. That's when people talk about their relationship growing deeper. It's just that they have been able to put to rest um, a lot of thinking that gets in the way of being happily in a relationship, whether it's marriage or some long-term way that people are in a relationship. I think a spark is really just you being in your deep feeling of, um, of love. However, I do think that you can, you can use your own wisdom to know if somebody's right for you. I think you, I don't think that George may disagree with me on this, but I don't think that you just meeting somebody at the store means that uh, you can be happily married to that person forever. It may be that person just doesn't fit you. But when you do find someone that really feels right to you, it, it could be forever in your life because. Um, the only thing that'll get in your way are these fears that come up, expectations that come up, opinions that come up. And if you know that's just your own making, and it allows you then to look at that person beyond those thoughts and you see that person deeper. And each time you see that person deeper, the, you get more love. So those are, that's my take on your question. Uh, I hope it was helpful, but that's what I would take about that. Yeah, what occurred to me, Mark, as you were um, talking about that is when any two people have their eyeballs on what form their relationship is going to take, that really takes away from being in the moment with that person. You know, if it's going to uh, become some kind of form where you cohabitate or get married or whatever, that will just flow. That'll flow. That'll occur. It'll, you know, be part of the flow that we talked about at the very beginning of this webinar, that that's really the flow of life. It's nothing we have to have on our mind. Thankfully, I mean, aren't we lucky? You know, we live in a society where we can all be independent. We don't have to depend on another person for our livelihood. It's, you know, it's just something to be so grateful for. But if you want to um, get together and cohabitate, you could have fun talking about that possibility and see where that leads. So again, it's, it's coming back to a nice feeling. And, you know, when I've been on dates, I'll, I'll notice, you know, I get caught up in thinking and then I let it go and I come back to the moment and I just go into listening. You know, I'm, the feeling of being curious about another human, seeing how they think and, what they're up to and the experiences they've had. It's fascinating. It's really interesting to just take in a person and not have it have to mean anything or be anything. Does that make sense to people? Can I add one more thing? I think that um, thought is this gift we're given. And um, and it helps us to know um, whether this person is somebody you want to do what Laurie and I are pointing to, to be curious with them. Of course, if you're in that state of understanding, you can see their humanness. But many of my clients have grown um, to feeling more secure about themselves by recognizing that thought that they may also get through from the gift of thought 
the sense that this person is, is not the person they're looking for. It comes through thought too, it must. There's nothing wrong with that. So I have had clients who have been able to get more secure because they've been able to really see what they would love to have, uh, what characteristics would be important to them, given what we've already shared. And, um, and they've been able to, to do that and find somebody that, boy, they could really share this feeling of love together and, um, and also be able to recognize the thinking that gets in their way of going further. Um, but it was really helpful for them to have the, the gift of thought so they could really recognize for themselves, this person's nice, I enjoyed the time, but not quite where I want to go right now. And that's been valuable for some of my clients who have not felt strong uh, to kind of call it their way you know what i mean by that to just kind of follow what feels right for them yeah and that kind of brings up that um one of the fears that someone or, or a number of people talked about in the poll which was um you know this fear of the other person not wanting to be with us or this fear mm -hmm. that we don't want to be with the other person because we'll hurt their feelings. Well, if you can see that that's all coming from your rendition of what's going on, it's coming from thought. It's coming from this invisible power that we have to think things up. And, you know, you don't have to worry about that stuff. If you're a kind person and you just let the other person who may want to spend more time with you, if you just let them know that, you know, it just doesn't feel right to me, but um, I've really enjoyed my time with you. Now, who hearing that would take offense to that? If they did take offense to that, that's their thinking. I mean, surely that person wouldn't want to be with with you if you were forcing yourself to be with them if you didn't really want to be with them you know so it comes down to just common sense and yeah. um who cares if you get rejected you know <laughs> it, it, it's just um telling you that okay that wasn't the right relationship thank you for letting me know that early on <laughs> right? It's, it's so much gentler and easier than many of us, and certainly myself, I, you know, I used to do a number to myself about um, these sorts of things, these questions. Laurie, uh, Maurice has a question for us. Oh, Maurice, where are you? There you are. Hi, Laurie. Uh, hi, Mark. Hi, Maurice. Um, delighted. I'm actually Morris, uh, as hey, opposed Morris, to Maurice. Barry. Morris. Um, oh. the Americans tend to pronounce it Maurice. Yeah. Um, Thanks for correcting me. Uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, a privilege to be on the call. And uh, yeah, it, it's a really nice way of, uh, of spending Valentine's evening. Um, yeah, I, I, had to, I had two questions, but I'll ask, I'll, I'll just ask one, I think, to, to uh, um, so, yeah, something I struggle with at the moment is is is, is 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 what do I want? So, like, I could come up with a list. It's like if I if I could have exactly what I want, it would be maybe this list. The person would be like this, but you know, I sort of think, well, <laughs> you know, you've got to be realistic as well. And then, you know, I get all sorts of different sound bites from somebody you know you gotta you gotta be open to you know it's like what well, 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 one thing like that i'd I, if i was writing a short list would be like Lon london based you know oh, I uh, but I, I i met met a lovely woman who's in germany last week you know <laughs> so uh yeah without saying more about that can you make maybe make some comments or help me out well, I have a feeling my response to that might be a little different than Mark's because I, um, I know that that's very popular 
to create a list of what you want. But I'm wondering if you go into a date with someone and you've got a list on your mind of what you're looking for, if that's going to get in your way of just being with somebody heart to heart, you know, and when in my experience, when I connect with somebody, they might be really different than the list I would have in my head and vice versa. You know, I could meet somebody who matches my list of, you know, the top 10 qualities and wonder why are we not connecting here? <laughs> why is this not going further? Because on paper, it's the perfect person. So, does that make sense that um, in some yeah. ways it's having thinking on your mind? I, I think. I mean, well, now, there are certain, um, you know, what are they called? Deal breakers, you know. Yeah. Deal breakers. Sure. Rather than yeah. the major ones. <laughs> yeah. like, a, like a bank robber would be a deal breaker for me. <laughs> 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 would be a deal breaker. <laughs> A successful a successful <laughs> bank robber well, or one that got caught? Bank, I don't know. A successful bank robber, I don't know. I might be going on a lot of nice trips. <laughs> I might have to take that off the list now. <laughs> well, look, look, you just have to be careful with, with characteristics. Um, that's just the outside form. And if you really find a deep, loving connection with someone, you you'll go beyond your list. You will go beyond your list because a person in a certain state of mind shows themselves to have certain characteristics that meet your list or miss your list. But if you go deeper, they don't matter. Honestly, they don't matter. Um, I've had so many, this is a little different, but I've had so many couples who, once they found their love again, many of the issues did not exist anymore. Right. They just gone because they found what they were looking for and they saw the ridiculousness of having to, um, you know, get bothered over some, some of these issues. Now there were some issues that they did need to talk about, but they did that with understanding. Yeah. So if you carry that with you, you got to be careful because even if somebody meets your list uh, or even misses some of your list, there's more to them. And that's what you're looking for. Um, so like you said, you, you, the feeling of you just saying, I just met this lovely girl in Germany. You could see already that feeling is taking off London from your list, or it might have the potential to take London yeah. off your list. Why? Because of the feeling, a lovely person. So just be careful with that because people are beyond a personality or characteristics and you want to go find those. When you find those, that'll tell you what you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious about your so, uh, second question. I'm, oh, um, my second question was uh, how, uh, any tips on quietening the mind going on a, going on a date? Sometimes it feels like, you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a particularly anxious person, but I sort of feel like there's, I'm not getting like a, a heavy stream of, date so it's like when i do it's like it, i don't know it feels a little bit more intense than i'd like it to be yeah i'd sure. like to be more relaxed and be able to to listen to someone deep d deeper than i feel like i'm capable of, of at the moment well you know morris the way it, it seems to me is that it's a it's like um an evolution that the more you know the fact that you're noticing that you get really caught up in your thoughts. That's, that's wonderful because we have to notice that we're getting caught up in order to let it go, <laughs> right? If we don't notice that we're getting caught up, we just stay in that mushroom machine of thought. So 
you just be, you know, patient with yourself and gentle with yourself that you'll have these clear minded moments and it'll feel so great that you're going to automatically go in that direction more often because the feeling is so nice. It's very, you know, it's magnetic. It's compelling to want to uh, find that feeling again. Yeah. So like, welcome to my humanity, you know, who, on, anybody on this webinar who doesn't get caught up in a bunch of thinking at times, we all do. I, I would venture to say, right? You want to add something to that, Mark? And I thought that was really nice what you shared. Um, you know, uh, I, I think you shared earlier about getting curious about the other person. And it's, a, it's an aspect of the, this listening process that uh, I've come to see very deeply. And I, I think that's an aspect that helps is to just try to get curious about this other person that you're meeting. Yeah. And I don't mean just uh, hear one thing and try to imagine what that's like. I mean, just really wonder how they're putting that together for them. How is, how is that fun for them? What is that experience like for them? And, and I think that's a way to kind of lose yourself in, in the journey of understand, uh, of discovering this other person. Yeah. Um, that, that helps me is to always try to, get my thinking to the feeling of wondering about this person or curious with this person. Yeah. Just try to find their way of life, you know, be interested in how they put life together. Mm -hmm. And as that starts to, you get the feeling of that, you'll come out. You'll just naturally come out. Lori, I'm looking at the fact of time and I'm wondering what, whether this is the time we should kind of wrap the webinar up is Ooh. yeah i guess it's four o'clock here already boy that flew <laughs> yeah oh i it's want to make a little announcement everybody there's a facebook group called conscious dating community so i'd love to have you if you're not already on there some of you are, I, I recognize, but if you're not already there, join us because it's a one, you could private message me there. You can um, post for the whole group and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that group because we're all talking about, you know, shared experiences. And um, well, I was also going to talk about that Mark and I are going to get deeper into the principles in a few weeks and it's March 6th, right? Do I have that right? March 6th at three o'clock again, Eastern standard time. And I'll send out an announcement to everybody. So that would be great one, you know, to invite your friends to attend who um, don't know anything about the principles yet. And it's always great to have people who, our students, as well as teachers of the principles on these oh, webinars. Gosh. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, you know, I've seen all of you. Yeah, it was great. You know, and all the different time zones involved too. So if you had to get up early or you're late where you are, thank you so much for being a part of this uh, first webinar. Look forward to hearing you, hearing from you. Okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.